It was only eight years ago this week at the famed Sundance Film Festival in Park City, Utah, that Ava DuVernay, after winning a big award there, finally decided to become a full-time filmmaker. She made a good decision, to say the least. Ava quickly established herself as a groundbreaking force in Hollywood when she directed the acclaimed movie Selma, which was nominated in 2015 for the Academy Award as Best Picture. Two years later, Ava's film 13th, named for the amendment that abolished slavery, was nominated for an Oscar as Best Documentary. Ava and I got together for a Sunday sit-down at her favorite tea shop here in New York to talk about shaking up Hollywood. So these are some teas you can choose from. Okay. Are you into tea? You're going to make me into tea. I am going I'm to make you. basic tea, but I feel no, like you're at another level. No, this is not basic tea. No, no. Golden monkey tea. Oh. Eastern journey. There's dong ding oolong. Toast? Are you, are you... I don't really drink a lot of coffee because I'm already really? like this. No coffee necessary for Ava DuVernay, whose own energy, drive, and talent for storytelling have made her a Hollywood powerhouse. The jury finds the defendant guilty. DuVernay earned wide acclaim last year as creator, writer, and director of the Netflix series When They See Us, a stunning dramatic portrayal of the real-life incarceration and subsequent exoneration of a group of young men accused of attacking a jogger and dubbed the Central Park Five. That's a big one to take on. Yeah. You want to get it right? When I met the men, it became emotional for me um, and personal because you look in their eyes and you hear their stories and you want the truth to be known. You know, Netflix flew them out to L.A. I watched them watch the movie and I was terrified because I could only see the backs of their heads, really. And they would shift or they would move. Oh, the sniffles. Oh, a little crying here. They were reliving it. Yeah. And at the end of the time, they rose and they turned to me with the light of the projector still on their faces and they're just in tears, and they just all gathered around me, all five of them, and just hugged me. DuVernay's latest project is the series Cherish the Day on the Oprah Winfrey Network. It tells the love story of one African-American couple each season. You created this, you're producing it, but you're not directing it. Mm -hmm. So That's different for me. It is a different thing, right? Yeah. Is that difficult for you? It is really difficult for me because I guess, I think this show really taught me that. Ava, you are a control freak. <laughs> One place where DuVernay did not give up control was in hiring. She insisted the show's production team have at least as many women as men. That's something that I've just been really focused on over the last years that I've had more, you know, I guess power in the situation. Making sure that women are being interviewed, people of color are in the room and getting opportunities. The 47-year-old DuVernay grew up in Linwood, California, near Compton, with two sisters and two brothers. Her mother was a bank teller. Her stepfather owned a flooring business. Ava graduated from nearby UCLA, then pondered her career options. I wanted to be a lawyer, and for a time I wanted to be a broadcast journalist. And you were an intern at CBS I, and News. And I took that all the way, and I was an intern at CBS News, as were you. We missed yeah. each other by a year, I think, because you were on the OJ, OJ trial. Unit. And I, you were OJ unit. I was OJ unit. And that made you run from the I news. Like, I'm, done. <laughs> I'm done with this. No way, I'm out of here. So I um, then I went into publicity. In 1999, DuVernay opened her own public relations firm handling publicity for movies like Dreamgirls and The Terminal. Spending time on all those film sets gave her an idea. I would be watching these frames through the camera and thinking, doesn't he want to just, or I think he should walk over here instead, or they should put the camera there. And finally I thought, well, let me just go ahead and give it a try. And so you made a film for $6,000? I made, made a short like about that. my mom. Short. And how did it turn out? I've wiped it off the face of the <laughs> earth. It cannot be found. It is, it, it's tough. But it was my school. So I just jumped in and learned by doing. Her filmmaking improved from there. And in 2012, Hollywood noticed. I want you to stop from me, baby. DuVernay's film Middle of Nowhere earned her the U.S. Directing Award at that year's Sundance Film Festival, a first for an African-American woman. We shall be victorious in our quest. 
we shall cross the finish line hand in hand. Just two years later, and only recently having given up her day job in PR, DuVernay found herself directing the major studio movie, Selma, about the revolutionary 1965 civil rights marches. Troopers, withdraw! I'm thinking, is this going to happen? Like, as you're moving towards the day of shooting? Right. It's like, something's going to happen. I mean, they're giving me the first, me? Me from nowhere? The first film ever made that centers Dr. King. I was like, something's weird. This is off. It's not going to happen. <laughs> then one day I'm like, action? <laughs> Too late I now. Guess I'm doing it. I guess we're doing it. And I thought if I fail, they don't know me anyway. I'll be like, that girl we didn't know did it. Selma was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Picture, another first for an African-American woman director. So you're standing on red carpet at the Oscars all yeah. of a sudden. Yeah. Three years before that, you were you know, running your PR firm. Yeah, I was walking someone down the red carpet. Yeah. Walking Jennifer Hudson down the red carpet of, at Dreamgirls. In 2018, DuVernay became the first woman of color to direct a live action film with a budget over $100 million in Disney's A Wrinkle in Time. You must be Meg. How, how do you know my name? Call me Mrs. What's It. You made history with Selma. You made history with A Wrinkle in Time. Are those important milestones to you? Well, I think we have to keep all that in perspective and um, not get too caught up in the firsts. It's nice for a moment, but also there are a lot of other incredible women out there. Like, for example, um, I've been uh, congratulated all fall for directing Harriet and Queen and Slim. Come it, on. It, congrats on Queen and Slim. It looks great. I think it looks great, too. Didn't make it, don't have anything to do with it. Ava DuVernay has come a long way in a short time. And now that she's made herself a force in Hollywood, she plans to stay for a while. I just want to be here in 10 years doing it. And so I don't know if that's a function of being a black woman director in a space where there aren't many, where people don't even know the difference between us. If it's a function of not seeing any black women with 30-year, 40-year, 50-year commercial careers. And if I can do that, I'll be... Uh, the success in my own eyes. I have no doubt you will. Cheers. <laughs> Thank One you. One more thing. Queen and Slim was great. Good job. <laughs> this guy. Sorry, Ava. Had to do it. Ava's series, Cherish the Day, premieres February 11th on the Oprah Winfrey Network. Our big thanks to Radiance Tea House here in New York for hosting our conversation. To hear Ava talk about the experience of working with Oprah, check out our web extras at today.com slash Sunday. And don't forget to subscribe to the Sunday Sit-Down Podcast to hear the entire unedited interview with Ava DuVernay. It's a good one. You can find it on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get yours.